Hello, I'm Mark Brown from editorskeys.com and if you've seen any of my recent press articles, you'll know I'm talking a lot about speed at the moment and how to speed up your editing process. Uh, today we're going to take a look at another way of speeding up your Mac or PC. Now, most of you have heard of RAM before. RAM can really increase the speed of your video and audio projects, but not a lot of people know that for example, with a 32-bit application like Final Cut Pro 7, no matter how much RAM you have, even if you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, it can only handle four gigabytes of RAM in the software. So you do need a 64-bit program to actually run more amounts of RAM within your PC or Mac. So what we're looking at today is a review of the new crucial 512 gigabyte SSD hard drive as well as an extra eight gigabytes of RAM which Crucial have kindly sent me to see how much this can increase the speed of our MacBook Pro here. Now the, the current MacBook Pro here has a 512 gigabyte standard uh, hard drive and we're gonna be replacing that. I'm gonna show you how you can replace that as well with the Crucial 512 gigabyte SSD as well as upgrading the RAM from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes and just showing you how much of a speed uh, increasement this will have on this MacBook Pro here. The same will be applied to a PC. Um, you should of course see some major differences when going to an SSD as well as some differences in the weight of the MacBook Pro as well. So follow me over the course of this video and we'll see exactly what differences happen before our eyes. In the SSD pack you'll receive your crucial SSD hard drive, a transfer cable and a handy little program called Super Duper which backs up your entire hard drive also making it fully bootable so you can replace your existing hard drive without any expert knowledge. Next you'll need to make sure you have the correct headed screwdriver to safely remove each of the screws on the bottom of your laptop. It's important not to force the screws otherwise you could damage the head making it hard to replace later on. Make sure you know where the screws came from, as often some will differ in length. The scary part comes next. Remove the entire back from your MacBook Pro to reveal all of your RAM, fans and drives. The hard drive is situated in the bottom left hand corner and it's the only thing you'll need to remove during this process. Once the screws are removed, use the white tab to pull up the hard drive and carefully remove the connection cable. You'll also need to remove the four screws on the side of the hard drive and put these into your new SSD. Once you've put all of the four screws into your new SSD, carefully connect the black cable, being careful not to bend this, and then screw the hard drive support screws back into place. That's all the work done, so replace the back of your MacBook Pro, making sure each screw is nice and tight, and then you're ready to go. Okay, so now for the interesting part. What difference does this actually make to the speed of your MacBook Pro? Here's a little before and after. On the left we have the MacBook Pro with the standard hard drive and on the right we have the MacBook Pro with the upgraded SSD hard drive. We're timing how long it takes to reach the login screen. Now just look at that, it's incredible how fast the upgrade makes it. It takes just 16 seconds to get to the login screen. And I've got to confirm, these drives are exact replicas of each other. Both drives are 512 gigabyte drives with 230 gigabytes of data written on them. The Mac is also running an Intel i5 processor. Once you've used an SSD, I think you'll find it really frustrating returning to a standard hard drive. It just goes to show, we're at a point in history where it doesn't seem to matter how fast your processor is. It's the hard drive's read and write speed which will make the biggest difference to most people. And there you go, after 56 seconds, the standard hard drive reaches the login screen. Okay, so what we're going to do now is show you how long it took some programs to open on the standard hard drive. First, here's Microsoft Word. As you can see, it is fairly slow and it seems to bounce up and down for quite a while before it actually reaches the boot screen and then loads so you can actually use it. There we go, it's just reaching the boot screen now. And next we're using the Twitter application. That bounces a couple of times and then loads up fairly fast. Safari, once again, two bounces and it's up and running, which isn't too bad. Now it's programs like Final Cut Pro X, which are really slow at loading. As you can see here, Final Cut Pro X seems to bounce around 
up to about 15 to 20 times before it even reaches the boot screen. And if you're running in and out of these kind of applications, it can be quite frustrating. I think what we'll do now is just open some other applications in the background just to show you that the computer hasn't paused. It actually takes this long. So there we go, iCal has opened up. That's fine. The Final Cut Pro X is still loading. There we go, it's finally reached its boot screen. Shortly we'll be ready to go. So there you go, not terribly slow, but not really as fast as you'd hope for a brand new MacBook Pro. Now let's switch to the SSD and see how fast that does things. Okay, so we're gonna open up Safari first of all, and you can see that is straight open almost instantly. iCal again, almost instantly. Twitter almost instantly and you can see there's going to be a bit of a theme here. Microsoft Word loads the boot screen and it's straight up and open ready to go. Even programs like Photoshop which would normally take maybe 60 seconds to open are open within maybe two or three seconds. And now for the big one Final Cut Pro X. Remember this took over a minute to load last time and there we go it's already on the boot screen and already ready to go. So that's my review of the Crucial SSD. At £500, it's quite a lot of money, but I'd certainly recommend it to anyone looking to speed up their Mac or PC. Join me again soon on another video. You can reach me on Twitter, it's at Editor's Keys, or you can visit our website, it's www.editorskeys.com.